Welcome to FRC Recap, where you get the latest breakdowns and discussions and what's going on in FRC. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Tyler Olds. And I'm Marshall Massingill. Uh, so today we're going to uh, be covering a, a bunch of awesome things with our guest, uh, Tyler Vaness, who's a WPI Lib contributor and a mentor for Team 3512. Welcome to the show, Tyler. Thanks for being uh, Glad to be here. Yeah, man. So lots to cover, of course. Let's jump right into our headlines. Uh, starting out on here, uh, we have some interesting news to cover. Uh, Fun has received some public and some not so public information uh, from sources showing the potential options for the 2021 FRC season in regards to competition play. Uh, we'll be talking a lot more about this in our additional discussions coming up here. But uh, starting out uh, from Chesapeake, there's a town hall offering a few options that were presented, uh, including smaller one day events uh, with smaller teams and no spectators. Uh, and we've also heard as well, too, that there's potential for a remote skills type competition, uh, similarly to what could be potentially from VEX. Uh, I'm going to guess that it first does it, they call it something different uh, than skills competitions. That's my guess on there. Uh, but ones that are virtually refereed uh, and have, uh, of course, much more social distancing and even game announced remotely as well, too. Um, interesting to see how bandwidth will be uh, with all these people connecting in for live events in random uh, locations, uh, of course. And then one other one that I thought was very interesting was limiting where teams can travel in distance uh, and almost creating many districts amongst regional areas. So uh, a lot of districts are pretty well self-contained or at least amongst a couple states, but it could also be similar for states as well too. Uh, this would be uh, an example for teams to only compete within their state, of course, or, or within a certain mile radius. So we're very interested to talk more about this uh, during Let's Discuss That, and we'll talk about that a bit more. Marshall? Yep. So uh, talking about headlines, the other big one that I think everybody's been talking about, at least in my circles, has been this Glowworm uh, vision system that's come out. So uh, it's finally a competitor to the limelight uh, that looks legit. Uh, it's got bright green lights, so check the box there. It's got a Raspberry Pi compute module, so we can check that box too, uh, and a camera. And uh, I don't know, what more could you ask for? <laughs> so uh, Tyler? Yeah. Um, so for WPI Lab, because I'm one of the developers, uh, we've got a lot of cool stuff coming down the pipeline. And uh, as you guys know, COVID's been you know shutting down all kinds of events, and we're replaying last year's game. But we still have a lot of cool features that don't really impact a lot of the old stuff. So we want to get that shipped out to users, like it's it, like when it's available, so teams can play with it before kickoff. So we're planning on doing some, uh, if you might remember the alpha releases we did a couple of years ago, we're going to do something similar to that with our new features. So lots of cool stuff for that. And we'll be talking, of course, more with Tyler, uh, getting more in depth in regards to uh, programming, WPI Lab, and a lot more coming up later on as well. Um, of course, uh, sad and unfortunate news last night. Uh, if you haven't heard, uh, it's been pretty much everywhere, uh, Mythbusters host and uh, just general overall amazing guy. He's been, of course, in BattleBots, a first uh, mentor as well, too. Uh, Grant Imahara has died, uh, passed away last night from a brain aneurysm. And wow, I mean, I was pretty shocked when I heard this, saw this late last night. Uh, very active in the first community, obviously, as a mentor with Team 841, the Biomex out of California, uh, and also helped out with First Taste Q, creating some uh, different videos uh, out there as well. You can uh, check those out. We have the videos uh, posted on Fun's uh, social media. Uh, but, you know, huge impact, of course, to the community, uh, both for, you know, first battle bots, the entire engineering community as a whole, those who love Mythbusters and the White Rabbit Project, which I think I watched one episode of. Uh, but, of course, his impact uh, will be missed, uh, and I, I can't. Uh, it's been a been a weird weird day uh, just hearing about that. Tyler Marshall, any thoughts on uh, Grant's passing? Um, definitely uh, somebody who is inspirational, I think, to a lot of folks in the FRC community, um, not just FRC but BattleBots as well, and just robotics and kind of making things and uh, in general. So definitely hits hard. Um, I don't really, I, I, to be honest, I haven't completely processed it yet. So, yeah, Tyler. I agree. Neither have I, because I remember, I remember growing up on, like, Grant with Mythbusters, you know? Yeah. And, like, he's doing all kinds of robotics stuff, because it's, like, what he used to do at ILM, you know? Yeah. So, it's been, 
I think it's been interesting for me, like seeing the news stories today. I feel like my feed was kind of inundated uh, with lots of information about this. And I didn't realize the extent of everything he had been involved in throughout his kind of life and career. So I, I think seeing a lot of that's been interesting to me. Can we get some F's in chat for Grant, by the way? Let's get a nice little F train going on. Pay some respects to Grant uh, as we move on with our headlines. Yeah. So uh, I think outside of that, the other uh, big article that uh, kind of came out this past week and past couple weeks uh, has been the uh, notion of attendance tracking. Lots and lots of people are suddenly asking about it. Uh, I don't really know why, to be honest, but they're asking, <laughs> um, which is good. Uh, so I, and I'll, I'll get more to that in a second. But uh, just so everybody's aware, uh, Team 900 has one of these. We've been doing it for quite a while now. Uh, we started attendance tracking I don't know, many years ago. So ours is out on GitHub uh, on our FRC 900 account. Um, anybody's welcome to use that. It's open source. We actually have a new version that isn't out there right now, uh, I don't think, uh, but it should be before too long. We've been trying to add a bunch of things like achievements and multiple teams and multiple schools that we previously didn't support because we suddenly have a lot more people sharing our lab, at least we had uh, this past year. Um, there's also a really cool one from 6328 that does tracking based on phones and whether the phone is in the environment or not, which I think is really cool. I think it has to be connected to an AP. I don't really know the full details, um, but I just thought it was a neat idea. I uh, might steal that for some of the stuff we're doing too, so it's kind of cool. And then 5190's got a really good one as well that I liked. Uh, so Tyler, what does your team do for attendance tracking? Well, we do the uh, old-fashioned paper approach. Yeah. I mean, it works. I mean, yeah, because we looked at that, that one that monitored the AP traffic, and turns out you don't actually have to connect to the AP for it to work. Ah. But in our case, we got people moving back and forth between rooms a lot. So you have to be within range of it for, for a little bit for it to pick you up. Yeah, we were we were thinking about it. And the, the biggest issue we've got is we have students that live on campus. So uh, they're in range oh. of it no matter what. Oh. Um, so <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't work that well for us for, for tracking students. It might work for mentors. So we were talking about it. Maybe we could implement it that way. Um, so I do think, uh, it, as a point of note, uh, something that I think is important when we're talking about all these and talking about uh, first in the age of COVID, uh, these attendance tracking systems can double as contact tracing, a uh, very basic Ooh. form of contact tracing. Interesting. So if you are going to implement one or if you needed an excuse to implement one, perhaps that's it, So which I think is kind of cool. So what's next, Tyler? Well, uh... Well, there's some interesting news outside of FRC. For the low, low price of $114,000, you too could have owned an early version of the original unopened Super Mario Brothers game. So WADA certified at 9.4. This A-plus condition game was one of the many that sold at auction. Uh, other games include Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, yeah. uh, which sold for $50,000. <laughs> So uh, the other Tyler and Marshall, if you had to pick one game, video game to buy, no matter the cost, what would it be? So uh, I'm going to go with an arcade game, and it's going to be very obscure, and I should I should have prepped this ahead of time. But when I was a kid, I used to play uh, – I'm going to see if I can find it. So there's an arcade game called T-Mech, which, yeah, let's see if I got it here. I'm going to bring it up on picture. I, it was this huge, like, yeah, yeah. console thing. Let me bring it up here. And you would you would essentially be a battle mech going around an arena and firing. But the the picture that's shown in the upper right here is a is a two person seater essentially, and you could essentially play over network play uh, with other through intranet ones for other team X stations that were in there. And I think they made it for the Sega 32X as well. So if I had to pick, if I had a huge uh, huge amount of space, that's what I'd go with. How about you, Marshall? Oh man, that's a tough one. Uh, I definitely like that idea of like going outside the box of normal uh, video games, going to something that's arcade-based. Like, one of the classic Star Wars arcade machines would be fantastic Ooh. for me. Um, but I think the one that... I, and I, In fact, I do own a copy of it. It's the original Sam & Max game from LucasArts. Uh, I'm just a big fan. I've uh, been doing that for a long time, so that's... Those, those those are my games, man. I really enjoyed them. Uh, I wish the studio that was remaking them was still around and still making them. Hoping one day they'll come back again. So there you go, Tyler. Anything for you? Well, I, the age of those video games is like before my time, but I would say that the earliest one I played is Pole Position. Yes, that, the, Ooh, the yeah. That was my dad's yeah. favorite game for the arcade. Honestly, 
that's that's yeah, a great cool. that's a great i love this i love that we're all choosing like classic retros that are that are older than uh pretty much everybody alive that's watching this show but <laughs> uh we'd love to see uh in chat uh what you play as well uh dan's man by the way says too young for arcade machines do you not have any like dave and busters around you like there are arcades are still are still alive and well kind of unless you're Chuck E. cheese then you're not doing very well but I feel as an adult, I'd feel weird going there anyway. So, and my kid's only seven months, so I don't think I qualify yet to bring her to that. So, <laughs> no doubt. All right. So, so uh, if you're looking for something to do, uh, by the way, this summer, uh, oh, you know what, Marshall? I feel so bad. I, I just want to play this in the background. Oh, I think we need to play this. Can you ex- can you explain what this is as we're playing some music here? So one of my students, the amazing uh, Olivia Fujikawa, who's off to do awesome stuff in the fall, uh, Olivia spent part of her summer uh, working on making Falcons play music, which for us is a bit of an ordeal, uh, more so than it might be for other teams because of our use of ROS. So we had to add a whole new motor control mode to our uh, to our system. So she created some YouTube videos to show this off. The commits uh, in Git for actually pushing this into the main branch just got merged in, and they've been doing reviews actually for the last 24 hours, uh, trying to get all the bits merged in. So we, we're hoping that uh, the next time we play at an event, we'll, we'll get some music uh, going on the robot as well. There so. you go. I, meant, I meant the place as we were talking. I totally blanked that. But the link is in chat uh, if you would like to uh, check it out in Team 900's uh, Super Mario Brothers theme on Talons. <laughs> there's there's a whole uh, playlist. Uh, I recommend ACDC's Black and Black personally, and then the uh, Star Wars cantina theme song is another good one. <laughs> So awesome. So love it. All right. So if you're looking for something to do uh, this summer uh, for some night, uh, Ryan Swanson posted an interesting opportunity to get involved with some drones. And this really uh, took my uh, interest because I just purchased a uh, DJI Mavic Air 2 uh, and I'm starting to love drones, man. Like there's some cool stuff you can do with it. Uh, so Ryan posted that there's on CD and a bunch of social places as well, too. Uh, an interesting uh, concept for a drone competition um, that he's going to be looking to sell kits for. Uh, so you can check out the link of this on Chief Delphi or not. Uh, but essentially, uh, there's a drone challenge where he's going to be giving away some gift cards uh, to the top 10% of submissions on there. Uh, there's a cool drone challenge video, which we'll show. Uh, and you can... Uh, Get a points for just doing a bunch of cool different tricks and flips and that sort of thing. I, I love this concept. Something you can do uh, at home and something that, uh, you know, you could uh, share with uh, friends. Like if you don't want to all be in the same place, you could probably take this down pretty easy, send it to the next person and uh, see how your friends do. So if you don't want to all go out and buy, you know, 170 bucks or whatever, which I think is fairly reasonable, but uh, kind of a cool competition. So shout out to Ryan uh, for coming up with this. And uh, I, I really wish him good luck. I'm totally into this. I think this is really cool stuff. So I don't know, Marshall, Tyler, you guys play with drones at all or anything like that? Uh, I used to have a DJI drone. I think it was some of their second generation ones. Sure. So I got that a couple of years ago. I was flying that all around the neighborhood. So, yeah, I I, uh, I don't really have much in the experience of it outside of, like, the cheap, crappy ones. Probably pretty similar to these, the, the little tiny mm-hmm. uh, dinky things. But uh, I will mention that Ryan has been working his tail off on this thing for a while, and he's been getting some ideas from others. In fact, uh, he and I have chatted a few times about it oh, and sweet. how to make it work. So, uh, honestly, hats off to him. He's done an amazing job with it. I think other teams should check it out. It's something that... Uh, we were talking about we, we occasionally do a Boy Scout Merit Badge College, which unfortunately right now with circumstances being what they are, things are kind of on hold for that. Uh, I think this would fit really well with that um, because it's such an approachable challenge for students to kind of uh, get into and get involved in. So honestly, I give it a look if, you, if you're into that kind of thing or looking for that right now. It's definitely something that's worthwhile. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch, keeping fun loud, live, and independent.